Welcome to TGIF. Travel is crazy these days. I just returned from a trip where I had two stops in my flight to get to where I was going, and I was a little concerned that I might not get to my destination because of all the craziness going on with traveling via airspace right now. Crazy. There was a point where I really had my doubts that my flight was gonna leave on time, which then put a doubt in my mind that I would miss the next flight. But praise God, I did make it there and home and my flights were on time. But some of my friends didn't fare so well. Some of them didn't get home till the next night. Crazy that we ever even would think we could put our faith in the airline system to begin with and let alone now, especially with all the craziness. Which takes us to the word of the day, which is trust. Trusting the airline system. The airline. Hmm. Who do we trust and what do we trust? Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that we put our trust in, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And today we are reflecting on David, King David, and how he had to learn through a lot of struggles to, to put his trust, his full trust in God. And we see him a very dedicated servant to God. So our scripture reading comes from Psalms, because that's one of the places that I think we see so we see David so vulnerable and so authentic in his life. And so Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joy for those who take refuge in him. Wow. I love that. It's so sincere and it's so honest, but it's so overwhelming too. And it's so hard to even comprehend. Because the only way we can really taste and see that God is good is finding and finding the joy in, in his refuge is really journeying with God through struggles. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's what's so hard is that we see David over and over again, you know, ebbing and flowing with, with getting himself in trouble and, and getting out of trouble, but he always has that consistency to trust God in everything he does. So I think that that's, I think that's important. David grew in his understanding of God at work during struggles. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's the lesson to be learned here. I think sometimes we think that the temptation comes from God in the struggle, for the struggle, the actual struggle. But the reality is that it's the temptation comes in and through the struggle. And so while the evil one, the devil is out there putting all these terrible things on us because of the broken and fallen world, the temptation really comes in that trust and doubt. You know, that's, are you going to trust God or are you going to doubt God? And I think that's, that's the real struggle and that's the true temptation. It comes with the struggle. So the, the struggle for doubt, the actual medicine or cure for it would be trust. And so what we're talking about today is how do we build a strong trust in God that we don't question in times of struggle. Mm -hmm. But the first thought when struggles pop up, when we, when we start to, to feel some kind of tension in the midst of struggle is, I would, should say, is a word. And that word is but. And it seems to break into that shield, that barrier that we have protecting us with that God shield, and it starts to fracture. And so mm -hmm. that word but really gets in our way. We all have buts. We all have buts. And our buts get in the way. But God, I prayed but this is what happened. God, if you would do this, but this. All the buts that we have really breaks that, that trust that we can have in what God can do. And I know for me, I pray, and I pray God's will be done, but I also add to the prayer what I want. Now God tells us we can ask in his name sure, yeah. and we can ask exactly what we want. But I need to be careful that when I am praying that God, your will be done, that it's not a but that comes in there, but more of a, and I trust you in whatever outcome it is. But we like to put that but in there. Yeah, somehow we have these big ideals that we'll never have struggles, but we have to remember the story that we're a part of, God's story, and the fallenness and the brokenness of the world. And so, you know, that the challenge that we have is what do we do? God is always good, and that's not a question. And so when we start to question, what we were really saying is, you know, is God good? You know, can we really take refuge in God? And so that's, that's our challenge. You know, we have a limited perspective of what God is doing in a bigger global perspective mm. 
And so with our little view, we've got to, at times when we're in the struggle, don't focus on the circumstances, focus on how am I taking refuge in God? And I think that that medicine for that doubt is, is sometimes hard to figure out. But I do believe that, you know, it's available to us in different ways. And one of those is prayer, like mm -hmm. we talked about already, but also through the scriptures. Psalm 34, this is the one we're in, begins with some very powerful, you know, reminders of who David was and how we should live into it as well. I praise the Lord all at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I don't know if we do that really. Mm -hmm. In times of doubt, do I praise God? In the midst of struggle, do I praise God? Now, you probably aren't going to be lifting your hands high in that, in a form of praise of with excitement, but you still can lift and pray and cry out in adoration, in respect for who he is, acknowledging that he is in full control. Because we like to say God at work, that's we say that all the time, God at work, find where God is at work, because God is always at work. But the idea that we have any concept can even begin to understand how he's working. Like we'll see glimpses of how he's working through situations, through lives, and we can acknowledge his presence and miracles that happen every day that we otherwise could have missed. So all of that is true, but that is I mean, like a glimpse, like an ounce, because he's so at work in these situations, good, bad, and indifferent, that we don't realize what he's doing because we don't know the rest of the story. But we do have the scriptures which tell us previous stories and we can rely on those mm -hmm. because what we see is from generation to generation, struggle is always there. Mm -hmm. And when people are struggling, they tend to doubt and wander and go away from God rather than what God is desiring us to do, is pull closer to Him and, and acknowledge His goodness. I think mm -hmm. that's huge. And to be grateful. In the moment though, it's hard to be grateful. That's why it's important that you kind of have a, a list of things you're grateful for because those are the reminders. Mm -hmm. And those are reminders you can pass on to the next generation too. You know, God saw my parents through this. God mm -hmm. did this for my parents here, or did that for my parents. Those are the things that kids can hold on to because they remember when it begins to happen to them mm -hmm. and they can connect part of that part of the story. And just that reminder that your story, your testimony matters. God knows the end of your story and what that looks like and how things play out. But every opportunity you have to share your story or bits and pieces of your story with others is just going to show once again how you're acknowledging how God was at work. And even if the circumstance didn't end up like you wanted, when you're able to testify that God was still at work, even though the prayer wasn't answered, even though the outcome of the situation isn't what you had hoped for, God is still good and God is still at work. We need to praise the Lord at all times. Mm -hmm. I will constantly mm -hmm. speak of his praises. Mm -hmm. So kind of heavy, kind of heavy. But just play with those words this week, doubt and trust, and see, are you really trusting God? Is your, or is your big butt getting in the way? Because maybe a prayer wasn't answered in the time that you wanted to answer, in the way that you wanted it answered. So don't let doubt take control of your life. God is good, and He is present, and He is always working. So the question we leave you with, what is your plan when doubt takes a hammer to your trust in God? You might be in a place right now where you're doubting the outcome of something, but is that going to crush your trust in God? Don't let it, because He is good and He is present and He is faithful all the way to the end. So have a good week this week, just looking in all the areas of your life and acknowledging where you are truly trusting God with no big butt in the way. Have a good week, y'all. Bye.